Hi, this is the second video I promised about um, writing quadratic functions in vertex form by completing the square. But these examples will show you how to do them when a is not equal to 1. So there's a couple of additional steps um, that are going to be different from what we did before. Recall that in the previous video when we were solving, or excuse me, writing them in vertex form, all of our uh, quadratic functions actually had a leading coefficient of positive 1. So if you look there, there was a positive 1 as its leading coefficient. For the sec second example that I did, it had a positive 1 as its leading coefficient, and again, a positive 1 as its leading coefficient. So this will actually help you to understand what to do when a is not equal to a positive 1. So to get started, um, I've got up here the very first step is to factor a from the quadratic and linear terms. So previous to, um, in previous problems, we did go ahead and put parentheses around those, so we'll go ahead and do this here. And we want to actually factor out our a. Well, if you pay attention to what this uh, e function has as a leading coefficient, it's the leading coefficient is, again, the coefficient of the term with the highest degree. So our quadratic term is the term with the highest degree. Its leading coefficient is a negative understood 1. And we need to factor that out. Recall that when you factor something out, what you, what's left is actually um, the terms that are left when you divide out that negative 1 from those ter two terms. So remember, you can think about like what's negative, negative 1 times what will give me negative x squared. Well, that would be a positive x squared. So again, a negative divided by a negative would have given us positive as well. Same here, a positive 12x divided by a negative 1 now makes this negative 12x. Okay? So this is what we've got so far. We factor out that um, a value right there, and now we basically are left with what we had before, which is a positive 1 as the coefficient of x squared. So our second step is actually going to be to pick up exactly where we left off um, when a was not equal to 1, which means we prepare to complete the square. So what that means we have now is y equals whatever that a value is times x squared plus, and of course it could be negative, uh, bx, meaning our linear term. However, we will always, always still add the number here in our trinomial uh, as we're creating a perfect square trinomial because even if b is negative, when we square it, it's going to turn positive. The only thing that will be a little bit different here is when we bring down our C, before we automatically said if this is positive, then we would subtract here. So it actually depends on if A is negative, whether we're going to add or subtract. So I'll explain that in just a moment. So again, let's go ahead and apply step two, which means we keep our negative, but here we're going to have X squared minus 12X plus blank minus 40 and I'm going to hold off in the second for the sign, and let me explain why. Up till now, everything we have is the same exact thing as we started. If I ignore these blanks here, if I were to distribute this negative, I would have negative x squared, negative times negative 12 is positive 12, and a negative 40. So right now, I've still got exactly what we started with. But when we add this number in, and, and like before we subtracted, what we have to pay attention to is that if I were to distribute this coefficient or out here, this a value, and it was negative, then what I would really be introducing to this problem is a negative number. So because this number that I introduce is negative, to counterbalance that to maintain equivalency, I'm actually going to add the number here. So it'll make sense in just a moment. So let's really quick talk about our next step, the third step being to take half of b and square it. Take, if I can spell, take half of b, square it, and put in both blanks. So half of 12 is 6, 6 squared is 36. So before, we were adding 36 and then automatically subtracting 36 so they would cancel out. Problem is, if we were to distribute this negative to each term, we would get negative x squared 
positive 12x, which is fine, except I sure did leave my x out, so let's put that in now. Sorry about that. Um, but then we've got a negative times in this positive 36. So what we really introduced to the problem that was not already there is a negative 36. To counter that, we are going to add 36. So we really have to pay attention. So if our a value is negative, then we're going to add. And if our a value was a positive, then we'd end up subtracting. So let's take that into account. If a is negative, we need to um, add half of b squared at the end. Remember to pause at any time so you can get caught up writing. And then if a is positive, then so for instance, if that was just a positive 1, then we would be adding 36. So to make it cancel out, we would need to subtract. So if a is positive, we are going to subtract whatever that value is, our half of b squared at the end. And that's really where, about where it did all, that's the only place where it really differs from what we were doing before. So at this point, we want to factor this perfect square trinomial we create, created. Perfect square, oops, trinomial. We want to factor it. All right, so that means we want to, Go ahead and bring down whatever we do have. So we've got a negative that we have to keep. We can't throw it away. But then we factor. So remember to factor perfect square trinomial. We take the square root, keep the sign, and square root. And we have the quantity squared. So x minus 6 quantity squared. And then we simplify this. So negative 40 plus 36 is going to give us negative 4. And that's vertex form, but we still want to do the very last step that we did before, which was to verify that these were equivalent. So let's go up here in y equals and type in standard form, our original standard form we were given. Negative x squared plus 12x minus 40. And then we want to type in our vertex form and check to see that they are equivalent. Sorry about that. I had added in an extra parenthesis, so at first they didn't match to my table. Sorry about that. So as you can see, y1 and y2 are equivalent. So again, just to kind of recap, the very first thing we do if our a value is not equal to a positive 1 is to factor a from the quadratic and linear terms. So parentheses go around your quadratic and linear terms. You factor that out. Remember, you're not looking for necessarily a GCF. You're looking to factor out the a. So if we divide it out, we've got x squared minus 12x in parentheses minus 40. Second step is to prepare to complete the square. With our a value on the outside, we write x squared plus bx plus blank, bring down our constant term, whatever that is, and then pay attention. If this is negative, we're going to add at the end. If we get a negative when we distribute a times the value that we plugged in when we took half of b squared and squared it, okay? So we want to go ahead and take half of b and square it and put in both blanks. Half of 12 was 6, 6 squared was 36. Because we really introduced a negative 36 that was not there, we want to add 36. And then we factored our perfect square trinomial, bringing down our a value square root, keep the sign square root, making sure that it's in the form, remember our goal was to get it in the form a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k and as you can see it, it does look like that now. So our vertex for this one would be 6, negative 4 because we switch keep but this is our ultimate goal but we also are, the whole purpose of really doing this is to be able to quickly identify the vertex. So our vertex is 6, negative 4. 
So I've got, um, if you understand it and you feel good about it, go ahead and stop the video now. I am going to go ahead and, just for the sake of practice, work three more different problems with the, with that have slight variation to better help you um, handle some of these problems. So the second example we're going to do is the function y equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 3. And we're going to apply all these same steps again, but I'm going to go through them rather quickly so you can see how the problem solving flows a little better now. So again, first step, put parentheses around your quadratic and linear terms, and we're going to factor out A. While I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and prepare to add in my term um, when I create my perfect square trinomial. Because I'm adding in a positive value, remember if A is positive, we're going to subtract that number at the end. Remember to first bring down your constant term, but because I'm going to add in this a positive number, I want to subtract the number at the end. Next, we take half of B and square it. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. I really introduced a positive 8 that was not previously there, so I'm going to subtract it here at the end. And then I'm going to uh, simplify and factor. So I'm going to bring down my A value factor my perfect square trinomial, square root, keep the sign, square root, and simplify 3 minus 8 is negative 5. So my vertex should be switch keep to negative 5. Let's go ahead and verify it in our calculators. Let's see, get it all on the screen here for you. So we've got 2x squared minus 8x plus 3. Let's verify that it's equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 2 squared minus 5. See if they match on our table, and it does. So I feel confident that my answer is correct. Next. We are going to do one with a negative leading coefficient that's not negative 1. So let's do, let's see, y equals negative 3x squared minus 6x minus 7. I'm going to go through all the same steps. First, putting parentheses around my first two terms. Factoring out A, this will leave me with positive x squared plus 2x plus blank. I'm going to prepare to complete the square. The number that I add in is going to be a negative number. So after bringing down my constant, um, since this is negative, I'm going to add the number at the end. Next, I take half of b and square it, so half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. But remember, what I really introduced into this problem was a negative 3. So again, negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared, negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x, and there's my minus 7. So if I really am bringing in a negative 3 that was not already there, I have to add 3 here to make it zero out, so I'm not really changing the equation. So next, bring down my a value, factor, um, and then check your answer. So this would give me a vertex of negative 1, negative 4. Let's check it out. and they match up. So I'm happy and I'm going to move on. The last example I'm going to do covers what happens when you have not only a negative leading coefficient but when you take half of b and square it, it's not a pretty integer. 
So hopefully we'll have your bases covered having gone over each type. All right, so for this example, same procedure. Ah, oh, you can probably see what's going to happen now. Our A value comes out. When we simplify, we get X squared. But now we've got negative 5 halves. That's not pretty. I always add the number on the inside when I complete the square. Bring down this constant. Because my A value is a negative number, I'm going to add my number at the back end. But this is where you just have to be conscientious about what you're doing. The procedure is not the same, it's just the numbers aren't as pretty. So if I take 5 halves, oops, let me put parentheses around it. If I take half of that, so I, you can see I've done 5 halves divided by 2, and then I square it, I get this decimal value, and that's not pretty. So I took B, half of B, hit enter, squared it, hit enter, and now I'm going to hit math, enter, enter. So the number I put in my blank is 25 sixteenths. What we have to be careful about is we don't just put 25 sixteenths here. Again, we have to see what number did we introduce into this function that was not already there. And it's this 25 sixteenths times the negative 2. So I'm going to just sit times negative 2. Math, enter, enter. And the number that I really introduced was negative 25 eighths. So if that's negative 25 eighths, I'm going to put positive 25 eighths here at the end. From this point on, we're going to, you know, need a calculator to add that probably, but really the steps are all the same. I bring down my A value, complete the, or excuse me, factor my perfect square trinomial, square root, keep the sign, square root. So x minus 5 fourths, and for this number here, I'm just going to type in 9 plus, oops, do I have it on there? Yeah, 9 plus 25 eighths, math, enter, enter, and I have 97 eighths, so that, and it's positive, so this will be my h value, or k value rather, so 97 eighths. So my vertex would be positive 5 fours, so switch what's on the inside, keep what's on the outside, and 97 eighths. So again, I'm going to verify this. I hope I didn't make a mistake. Negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 9. Then negative 2 times the quantity x minus 5 fourths squared plus 97 eighths. Make sure I got it all in there right. Yep, looks good. Second graph. Yay. My y1s and y2s match. So I have correctly written uh, this function from standard form into vertex form. And that concludes this video.